Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. Today's show features Vivian Chavez, who is an Arcturian ambassador, intergalactic teacher, author, speaker, creator of the Arcturian Healing Arts Program and Arcturian Energy Matrix Healing. She is also the host of the Infinite Star Connections podcast and the radio show, Arcturian Conversations. This show, Dare to Dream, won three Talk Radio Positive Change Awards just recently, also the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it is high ranking under self-improvement in Apple Podcasts. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work all over the world. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am a media visibility specialist. I am a book writing coach, and I meet with people from all over the world in a group twice a month on Zoom to help them take their book from the inception of the idea to completion and published. Also, I run a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status. And boy, are there a lot of people right now coming forward that I'm working with on their books. Interesting times. And finally, I show spiritual messengers how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. If you feel resonance with any of these things and you know you need to go a little further there, let me show you how. I've got a free gift. It's templates, it's videos and how-tos, and it's fun. Let's get you more visibility. My gift to you, go to debbie-inger.com slash gift. That's D-E-B-B-I. D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. My guest, Vivian Chavez, is an interstellar being who ascended thousands of years ago. Her soul avatar essence has returned in a projected hybrid form as an emissary for the re-ascension timeline. Renowned for her advanced healing services, Vivian has conducted over 23,000 private sessions worldwide. As an oracle of Arcturus, her mission includes traveling from star system to star system to assist civilizations on the verge of evolutionary ascension process. She's a member of the Intergalactic Federation of Light and collaborates with Star Regency and Interplanetary Councils. Vivian speaks at conferences globally, and she's interviewed on radio and on online summits. Vivian is featured in the multi-award winning documentary, Extraordinary, The Revelation. And she's also featured in an upcoming documentary based on Craig Campobasso's book, The Extraterrestrial Species Almanac. If you'd like to learn more about Vivian, go to infinite healing from the stars.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Vivian Chavez to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much for Debbie for this amazing introduction. It is such a joy to be with you and all your audience worldwide. Wow. What a great bio. And I think the line that stood out most to me was about you assisting beings, planets on the Ascension timeline. Hello, <laughs> here we are, humanity, Earth. Are you working with us right now specifically to assist us in this process? Oh, absolutely, Debbie. And in fact, and the fact that I am here physically in this human hybrid form, it's the choice I made a long time ago when the Arcturians on the star delegation that I represent well, we are starting to see that the Earth herself was going to enter the most higher probability of the Ascension timeline. And we have to think about when you look at intergalactic perspective with a race who is thousands and thousands of years old, it's a very natural ability for us to be able to look at multitude of timelines and to understand which one will have the greatest alignment. So this is why I chose to be 
on the planet, and we call it boots on the ground, to really support directly and accelerate that most higher potential of the timeline that we're in right now. And to that, I must say that 2024 is especially more potent in that direction. I mean, just with your work, uh, all the people you interview, the light workers, the star, star seed coming to the surface, becoming more aware of who they are, want to create more, uh, people asking more, what is my sole purpose? I'm, I'm here to serve. And what, what else can I do? What else can I bring? And so, of course, we rejoice to see that, Debbie, because this is something that We've been guiding and supporting humanity for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I would say even in the ancient civilization time, like the time of Babylonia, Lemuria, Atlantis, leading to ancient Egypt, leading to, you know, where we are today. So we've been involved, or an aspect of us have been involved with the Earth Ascension evolution for a very long time. And it's really empowering to see where we are today and to look at the next three years how much you are finally in that conjunction of really embodying and succeeding into your reascension um return it's a grand return in that state if that makes sense yes and what i like about this time i mean i don't like it in a sense because there's so much coming at us right now. I feel the energy of that. And concurrently, I see someone like you, like you're a perfect example, Vivian, because I have watched your star, if you will, rise and continue to rise. And all the places you're being asked to speak and featured and interviewed and one that shows me a great acceptance about this conversation and two, the fact that somebody like you is more and more coming on the global stage, that's the energy I am seeing. The world is hungry, but the world also needs this kind of direction during tremendous change, but also a lot of possibility. Very, very well said. In fact, that intertwined with the next point we wanted to share mm. is that the fact that, like you said, like talk about my star rising on a more global level, more recognized, that there is a more acceptance. There's more, even in the collective consciousness on the planet, there is a higher frequency or a stability in the frequency that we are maintaining consciously. And that allows us to be more face to face, more predominant, to bring about to bring finally these layers of frequency we, we've been wanting to do for a lot of time. I remember myself in my own journey, even 10 years ago, the team would say, my actor and father would say, look at where the conscious stages are. You're going to be either invisible or you're going to be simply rejected because your frequency mm. are not, they're not ready for this. Mm. Now we're entering a stage where claiming I'm a star seed or when my mother was pregnant with me, my star group added some DNA feature to help me to my mission would be considered as a form of hybrid or the star children of all generations. I see people even throughout Asia rising, asking how can I be in oneness with the creator? How can I support that awakening process. I had recently a private session with a beautiful gentleman directly from China, and his desire was to return in communion with Creator Source and was reaching out to us how much we can help him more in that sense. And we did a lot of soul coaching to help him understand the power that he carries in him and how he can really shift the synergy around him. So we're returning into the asking different questions. We start to awaken these higher faculties, this higher state of presence, perceptions, understanding, and even embodiment that allow us now more and more and more as we move into the stage of the world 
to be able to bring in the next level of knowledge, support, guidance, reawakening of ancient um, connections, whether it's techniques, whether it's, you know, rediscovering the mechanism of your body template. We're finally in that point. So at the beginning of this new year, 2024, my delegation came and said, this is it. This is the year you've been waiting for. Wow. And I said, what do you mean? And they said, for many of you who have been preparing for this for generations, mm. you're finally entering that stage. You are in that era. This is the beginning of it. You are finally arrived at that point. It is exciting. At the same time, we do understand there's a lot of changes coming in. The old structures need to be transmuted on a multitude of levels. And that's going to require all of us to understand a much, much bigger divine design behind this restructuration, whether it's the medical field, education, eventually financial, um, you know, how you understand your government structures or authority figure and all of it. It's helping to accelerate something in your DNA that helps you to release yourself from perceiving unconsciously yourself still as a slave race or, mm -hmm. you know, to be at the mercy of a higher authority, whether it's a new law or regulation by either the Senate, senator or government or the president or any structure put in place. And you start to feel that it has less and less and less empowerment on you because you're breaking free from that encoding. And that is a part of the huge evolution process that we've been seeing over the last few years in particular. But now, as we're moving into the next three years or so the triple gateway of acceleration is going to be even more potent. What do you mean by that? What's a triple gateway of acceleration? That sounds intense. <laughs> I knew you would ask this question. This is why we put that keyword just in place. <laughs> Good one. Uh, so you have to think about when we speak, we look at from our intergalactic perspective. So we evaluate and perceive time really much outside of your 3D linear time. Okay. So we're not that will be talking about calendar years or prediction in time and space. We're looking at a movement. So 2024 vibrationally as a, like a triple acceleration process, meaning that 24, 25, 26 create a triple corridor, if you would, of deep, profound metamorphosis changes, whether it's personal in yourself collectively on the planet but also within the body and the core of the mother Gaia herself mm -hmm. because the planet is shifting wow. so an example of this is when we went through at the end of 2023 to December shifting into January of 24 many people worldwide I felt almost like a contraction like there was a lot of disruption and health issue and moving and purging and things were very very condensed that's because you were shifting out of a paradigm that is overlapping into the next and you felt that crossing of the timeline meaning the third dimensional timeline with the higher fifth dimensional ascension timeline and then moving beyond so the timeline were in conjunction with each other think of it as when you have either a solar eclipse, when the sun is in alignment with the, with the earth and the sun or the moon, and you have different planets in conjunction, well, it will have a certain impact on you or on the electromagnetic field of the planet within your own body system, your chakra, your intuition. You may feel a certain, sometimes people feel that, well, I feel more like a burst of energy while I'm unable to sleep as well. Mm. So, okay. It is interesting. So one way or another, when there is certain planetary conjunction or alignment in your solar system, it has an impact on all life on the planet, on the earth, one way or another. So that crossing of the timeline that we've been feeling so tightly at the end of 2023, especially moving into 2024, we're going to start to feel that that conjunction is clearing away. 
And it's like when a solar a solar eclipse is clearing, everything seems to come back to normal. But in reality, you still carry a new frequency or that changes in the field or that solar frequency that's been coming in. You still feel it, but it's toned down. So you become more normal, more organic, more natural. So we are shifting this way and it's going to create a catalyst a more conscious change and evolution yes we are finally at that point so trust in yourself stay grounded uh, cultivate that connection with yourself and it's all about stepping into your light as a as opposed to be contracted in fear and anxiety move back into your life just breathe say i'm coming into a point of zero point of divine neutrality mm -hmm. reset it's going to be important to reset along the way so you stay in alignment instead of being thrown off balance if that makes sense I, first of all i love the question that this gentleman you are working with asked and you're framing it that even questions like this are changing what an amazing question he wants to be more directly connected of course he is but i understand in this meat suit it can be weird so beautiful beautiful work and question and also this idea of how much is coming to us and then our adaptability and how much is coming to us and our adaptability and i know i'm feeling that i i feel it i'm so sensitive and i feel the energy then I can look at my life and go, wow, all these amazing opportunities are coming to me. And the drumbeat just says, yes, just say yes, just say yes, just show up, you're being pointed. And then I've even added into the mix as though it's not enough and it is enough. What's already come my way is um, following my joy. And you know, one of my great joys is shamanism. So I've already signed up for a 12 week course here and a weekend in May in Colorado. And there's all this. And, and I keep checking in because it's a lot, especially as a sensitive who does need some space sometimes, but I feel the rightness, if I can say that, the correctness of this alignment right now. I don't know if folks out there can relate, but I'm jumping on board and I'm saying, I'm yesing, saying to joy, yes to hobbies, yes to where my heart is, my passion is, yes to speaking and doing things that are really visible that typically you know, a part of me prefers not to do, but I'm saying yes. And do you see that energy for people and even more? To some degree, it will they be at the same time is each layer of joy of new potential opening. When you allow yourself to be very much in alignment and understand what is the purpose behind this potential or mm -hmm. this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because one thing we see moving more into is stepping out of some of the spiritual concept and start to become more the application or the embodiment of it. So there will be stepping stones, some form of technology where people will be drawn to, or like you said, you, your joys in shamanism or others will be more in terms of doing great work or working more into intensively as beautiful bridge of interconnection with the intergalactic communities so every stepping stone or every role that we embody and we say yes to it's really an invitation to also rediscovering what is also profoundly changing in you in addition to be of service in addition to be a part of this movement that is rising uh, rising more and more into our light, rising into rediscovering who we are. So it, it's wonderful to watch, again, from an intergalactic perspective, looking at the human race and to see like the rainbow rays, there's different spectrum of colors and then there's going to be, you know, different layers and different experiences. But we know that all of your rays, so to speak, eventually converge into a commonality and that is your pathway to finally return to your reascension. It's a grand return in that sense. We've done this before multiple times. And as many old soul on the planet who have returned, 
descended, retracted, go back to the ABCs and go, oh, okay, now I can I can help you to show you what does it mean to go back from ABC and returning into a place of self-mastery. So take the time when all of you, everybody, of course, take the time and with each step that you say yes to, that you understand the purpose behind it and you can integrate that to create a new foundation. So it becomes stepping stone, right? Each step you integrate, you master is a part of you. And that is real, true, profound transformation. And mm. so, yes, in that sense, we can see that happening more and more. Yeah. I've never asked you this question. I met you many years ago. And the moment I met you and it was on Zoom through somebody else and I was like, oh, she's different. And when you were introduced to me as an Arcturian hybrid, I went, uh-huh. Yeah, she's totally meeting you, Vivian, not totally from here. I get that. And I know one of the things I see in you, and I bring this up because not all humans have this, you are so incredibly well-mannered. Um, just gracious, always. You reflect such beautiful things back to people. Um, you interact with people in such a, it's a divine way of being. And it's rare because not, not a lot of humans have that. And so that brings me to my question. So that's just a beautiful observation about who you are. And one of the many things I appreciate about you, but what is it like to be you? How are you different? than humans as a hybrid, what is it like to be you that is different than us? Yeah, what an empowering observation and compliment. I am so moved. Thank you so much, Debbie, to exhume yourself some grace into what you do and also uplifting everyone that you work with. So thank you so much for this. What is profoundly different about myself is, is it something that people I may comment about is the way we think, the way I think, the way I perceive reality, the way I even speak. So the mannerism that you're referring to is also very innate. And of course, it got polished more over time as I got to be more into my power, accepting the full spectrum of who I am and understanding that it is all safe to be among humans because at some point I felt, hmm, I'm not sure, you have seemed to be a bit unpredictable. It can go either way. But now there's more stability. It allows a fuller aspect of integration of who I am. As in this lifetime, I have chosen to serve the prime creator as an advance into galactic being to that what served a greatest purpose for the time being. So these natural innate traits are very part of the Arcturian nature. We are known as great diplomats, ambassadors. In fact, um, often time we're being called upon us by either groups or, you know, federations or hierarchy or structure. This this endless of it. There we often time call upon to be assigned to either a world or a civilization or a group that is either in conflict or they are either a little bit in between or they step out of distortion or anything that needs assistance with, we oftentimes the ones who are going to be deployed or assist. And that can be also in the higher octave of a creation, for example. We work with this beautiful race who primarily will vibrate on a seventh, between seven and eight dimension. So for them, retracting their frequency into a lower form it's it's impossible for them so we after time we're going to be uh the bridge or the representative the voice for that group communicating with other group who may be at a at a lower octave so we're going to be the bridge in between and that's an example of what we do in addition to that from a human perspective and i must give credit to my human parents is that I grew up also in a double French culture. And there is that also the meaning um, abilities. My mom always been very big on etiquettes, whether it's table mannerism, whether it's how to behave in public. I remember even as a child, I mean, 
I was maybe seven years old, my brother was five, and we would go to fancy, expensive restaurant just as a treat, and, you know, once in a while, and sitting down at a table with a very complex setting of silverware on the table and having the, you know, the napkin on your lap and knowing exactly where to go and keeping my elbow off the tables and sitting on the chair, being able to eat. And the other adults around would look at us going, there's a family with very young children, a very super expensive, well matter restaurant, and they're just sitting there and they're having a dinner like, like it's just a walk in the park on a Sunday afternoon. That's because we were also raised that way. So again, this is no coincidence why we chose this lineage for many reasons. This is only one of them. There's this combine of synergy of being thought on a human level, but also at a soul level because of who I am. It is profoundly a part of who we are as Arcturians. Um, it's just... Plus, the thing is that when we connect with someone, like today with you, Debbie, and your audience, everybody's going to be watching, we feel you. We are more than exchanging words and, and uplifting conversation. We're exchanging a soul aspect with you. We can feel your energy. We want to, we're here to help to help you remember what is already in you and what we see as you. And then sometimes we have to bring a little bit more of our serious part and going, hmm, okay, we'll have to re let's 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 re reframe a few things. But all, overall we have this we emanate as that presence, that love, that respect that is very natural because we understand the journey of Earth humans. We understand that this civilization has been manipulated over and over again. And this is more than you know, or 3D human or distraction or mental, mental or emotional. There's so much more. And we rejoice to see you finally say, yes, we're saying yes to the, the journey. We're here for this. I'm here to retake my power. And it again, it's really part of who we are. We are Octarians. This is mm. our essence. Wow. Thank you. That was not only beautiful, but really calming to listen right. to. And I, I can just imagine you as a little girl sitting at that restaurant and being so poised and mannered and calm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I like the connection that you brought up that the Arcturians are the diplomats often called in. And, you know, of course, how perfect you would be born into a family that would nurture that aspect in you. Um, <clears throat> since you're a member of the Intergalactic Federation of Light, what role does the Intergalactic Federation of Light play in your work? And how do you collaborate with them, with the Star Regency, with the Interplanetary Councils? How does that all of that show up for you? That's a fantastic question, Debbie, on a multiple level. So one of the things is to, because I an aspect of me is here in this form, this physical form, I got to experience the frequency or what we call the dimensional experience of what being an earth human, the changes on the planet, whether it's in the grid system, right in the planetary core, looking at the human template shifting, behavioral pattern, protocol of communications. So it's complex to be on this planet because being an earth human, it's complex. You have a lot of protocol, you have core values, there's ethics in place, you know, where nobody can go to your house and take something in your fridge and leave, say, see you later, you're going to go, whoa, 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 who are you? What are you doing here? And get out of my house. So there's some, there's a lot of protocol that are understood here, but for many of these other group consciousness, it is completely foreign. So, so we, part of my work because of the experiences, the learning that even my group is having through my own planetary experiences it helps us better redirect or make different suggestions being able to reassess 
So for example, one layer we work with is the spiritual hierarchy of the earth, where it's overseen by masters. And so they understand the dynamic of the earth. We can we can have a more um, understood, more harmonized language. But when we move into certain interplanetary council, they may say, well, in our reality, all of you talk about the human emotion, the protocol, the communication, how to approach a human without overstimulating their immune system or the nervous systems, they have no really understanding of what it means. So we're we're teaching them, we're we're teaching them what it feels like to move to a different vibrational experience. And that's how we call it. And so my role is really both as at the same time, I will talk on behalf of the earth. I will talk about, you know, on behalf of humanity, what I see with the other star seed coming and the other frequency. And so when we come back and we interact with these other groups, it gives, in simple terms, a bigger picture, a better understood picture to what kind of assistance, what is needed, what needs to be released, what needs to be intervened. And, and I'll give two examples about intervention. A few years ago, when I was at a conference in Laughlin, uh, something happened. I was um, a group of, let's say, from the dark light polarity was on site at the conference and it created severe interference. So this is why I went into urgency. We need to have a council, a meeting right away. We need to intervene. There's uh, interference at that place and be above and beyond and many, on many levels. And so long story short, we discovered that this group who was creating distortion at a conference was in violation of a treaty. Mm. So this is why we brought it to an aspect of the council because there's a multitude, it's very complex, but we brought it and then there's an intervention and then this group was extracted completely off planet from that place and we were able to implement different measurement. But that helps tremendously, not only in my work, but also in the timeline of Earth herself because that was a really big one and I'm super simplifying what happened is much mm -hmm. more to it, but it's the treaty violation and my point is, that's one aspect of it. The other aspect is I also seen in the past coaching some of these intergalactic groups who connect with human beings as channelers and it's done by soul connection, soul agreements and all of this and it's all nice and dandy the issue with that is that the human template is designed in a certain way. So imagining like a funnel, if you want to push down too much frequency of energy to the point that your funnel or can break or it will create a massive blockage. So we have to teach or to coach this group to say, look, you mean well, you want to transfer information, frequency into the vessel of this channel. But at the same time, there's a potential that you may disrupt their immune system, the nervous system, and you can create even um, on the brain level, some kind of distortion. Mm -hmm. And I have seen clients coming to me say, oh, I've been channeling this high console for years and my health has having a lot of issue and come to find out that the body could no longer hold the increasing in frequency so again, it was too much coming into the body. So we have to work with the person channel and with the group the channeling from. So both aspects can be in harmony again. So that's another example of how it affects the work here. What kind of uh, projects or initiatives are the Federation currently focused on? It depends on what, what branch, because it's like, think of it this way. If you look at a very elaborate government structure here from, on, from any country, and you will see, well, if I want to go into more diplomatic initiative, you will have a branch that will be assigned to this. If you want to go higher, it says, okay, beyond the diplomacy, we need to implement, let's say, a new agreements, or we have to you know, intervene when there's a treaty violation or when 
the as a planet is finally in the midst of a huge planetary change, then there will be more specialized group within that structure that will be realigned to this. So we work a lot in conjunction with what we call the Council of Time. Mm -hmm. We usually have two guardians of time. Mm -hmm. When it pertains to timeline changes, mm -hmm. then we're going to be going in that direction. Or right now we can see that on the DNA level, the genetic DNA level of human body is shifting. So mm -hmm. we can work with the uh, aspect of the branch that is more in tune whether it's the ancient library for the human template with the Lyrans, for example, mm -hmm. or other groups. So it really depends on what is it. Because when you talk about the word federation, mm -hmm. it's a big label. Uh, it, it's a big umbrella, not label, it's a big umbrella. And that umbrella has a multitude of purposes, directions, more it's more universal, Others will be more cosmic. Others will be more, okay, we're going to be assigned to a certain planet like the Earth in a solar system. That's part of the little branch in the Milky Way. This is that council will be assigned for this. Others will oversee more on the creation level. So there's, there's a multitude of branches, so to speak, if that makes sense to, to visualize it this way. Yeah, absolutely. So interesting about the time and the timeline. And when you mention that the genetics of humans is changing. Can you say specifically in what way? Well, for example, like we talked about is about st stepping out of the slavery program or be a hard worker and huh? these cliche of work hard and then you have your reward or you'll have to be able to earn a vacation. That's part of a gene that was uh, incorporated into the DNA a long time ago to be better docile workers. Uh, was that so something, that, can I just interrupt? Was that something the Anunnaki did to us? Part, it's part of it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's part of it. It really is. And they're not the only one, but yes, it's part of it. So that's an example of that gene that is transmuting. So you no longer intuitively or unconsciously afraid of a higher authority mm. or the programming to listening to your church or religion or a book or a government or an institution. So this is all part of an aspect of what we see into the DNA template that is shifting. It's, there's a reactivation, there's a transmutation that is done. And that's also to supporting all of you to realize what is your own reascension process mm -hmm. going to look like or even feel like? So there is an individual process into it because not everyone on the same state of consciousness. At the same time, there's a global more planetary shift in that direction as well. Remember, you are part of the symbiotic part of the earth. You're living in a symbiotic aspect with the ecosystem of a planet you call the earth or Mother Gaia. So when there's changes in that ecosystem, it's reflecting into your own internal ecosystem. Ooh. Wow. That's like a pause. It's very good. <laughs> Thank That's you. It's like a deep breath. <laughs> it is. It's like to ingest that information. That's incredible. And I love this deep connection and reflection with Mother Earth. Um, so much I could say about that. It's it's very big for me right now, this connection. I spend a lot of mm -hmm. time there. I want to talk about a synchronicity, make a little segue here. Because in December, I was looking for gifts for my partner, and I just wanted one little sort of a stocking stuffer. And I found uh, Craig Campobasso's book, The Extraterrestrial Species Almanac. What an amazing title, right? And I was like, all right, I'm in. That's that's something I'm going to get him. <clears throat> and then I find out in January <laughs> that you are in his, Craig's documentary film by the same title, The Extraterrestrial Species Almanac, which I'm so excited about. Can you provide, Vivian, a sneak peek into this upcoming documentary? Mm. Love, love it with a capital L. And I want to feel 
the presence of Pachamama, huh? Gaia, as we speak. So a sneak peek would be based on my experience. I'm really thrilled. I mean, super thrilled and honored that Greg brought me in, beginning with the book itself, when he asked me, Vivian, would you make a contribution to the Octarian section? And I'd say, of course, gladly. So we provide a contribution that was blended into other things. And then my name is in the glossary, so to speak, as a contributor. And I was already happy with that. But when the time came to turn the almanac into a documentary, then his beautiful production company based in Germany contacted me and all of us on Zoom, we did a series of interviews. And that's that's a few years back. It's at least two years ago. And so the Octarian came and we'd have a dialogue with them and everybody was so happy about it. And so two more years passed and then about a week or so ago, Craig himself called me up on my cell phone because he has my private number, of course. And he says, Vivian, the documentary is fully ready to be launched. Plus, we're going to have the world premiere or the official screening at Contact in the Desert this year. Uh, at the end of May, it's going to be on Saturday, June 1st, and we're going to do afterwards an exclusive Q&A panel with the cast and crew, and of course, we want you to be part of it. So, of course, I said yes, and I will be back at contact for the purpose of supporting Craig and the documentary. But now, if you look at the significance of this documentary coming up right in June energy, right, almost in the midpoint of 2024, it's really about bringing another higher, more positive orientation about our star communities. It's about reopening these doorways freely. We we completely read, it's a revolution of the word disclosure because it's no longer about disclosure. It's about reaccepting that that paradigm that even coexists in your DNA to begin with. So imagining how many beautiful people will be in this documentary, including us, speaking from the heart, speaking from as representative and emissaries of these multitude of intergalactic groups and to bring the next level of knowledge and activating, helping everybody to awaken finally with acceptance that this is a natural, natural occurrence. I and love it's this. been right. Yes, I'm so excited to hear you say all of this and to even tie all of this positivity and what's coming and what is here. Uh, into this documentary, it's unveiling, it's official unveiling, a contact in the desert in June of this year. Um, I'll be there, folks, join us at the Coachella Valley. It's an amazing event. And and then, so I want to ask a question based on when you talk about the cosmos and our connection, Vivian, how will, from this moment forward, how will our star brothers and star sisters powerfully play a role in new humanity, in the new earth. How are they gonna show up? What will they do? They have been doing their work for a very long time. Look how many of their representatives or their emissaries, they are selflessly sending out to the planet to take on human form, be born, go, through the bend of forgetfulness. Go back to the ABCs of learning how to walk, talk, read, go to school. And who knows, uh, when you think about high school, you go, oh, short circuit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and going all of this and being spread out throughout the entire world. I mean, star seats in the Philippines and New Zealand, Germany, throughout Europe, you are people from you know, the star seed in the UK, Canada, US, we are, the star seeds are everywhere. So think of it as powerful anchor point of very specific frequencies that have been contributing for generation into bringing finally the, the consciousness in a new alignment to be accepted, to be ridiculed, to be thrown stone at, to be embraced with love and all of the spectrum of colors 
and dealing with the emotional aspect of humans. OMG, I mean, <laughs> you have this faculties within you called emotions. Whoa. I try, I attempted to explain that to the Federation and other groups and you go, emotions. No, no. I said, not just emotion. It's human emotion, the complexity in that, just that experience alone. So that is simply a strengthening of what has been going on for centuries. We're simply finally realigning ourselves. When you look in the stars, you know, looking just at bright stars, hoping to see a little dot in the sky, to see a ship and power up. Think of it as you communicating to a higher consciousness who wants to connect with you to the higher consciousness back to you. Now, with the discernment that there are groups who have other intentions. There are groups who exist not just in the positive enlightenment spectrum, they exist into the opposite spectrum where to them to come to you, take what they want and leave, it's no big deal yeah. because they don't have the same morality frame as you. To them, they're entitled to do that. And we encounter them, believe me, uh, we have those aspects. So it's more of a rejoice rejoyful reconnection reunion in mastery in intelligence in certainty in your light to know that you are part of this but you understand that as there are diversity of light and on life here on the planet imagine the diversity of life and consciousness in the universe so mm -hmm. get to know that point of connection what we call your soul ancestry Ask, I am ready, reveal to me what part of my soul ancestry belong to the intergalactic groups. What aspect do I represent in this lifetime? And how is it serving my sacred life mission here? And you will see that if you start to speak this way and you are listening, you're receptive to the answer, you'll be amazed to what really come to you. It's no longer a big secret anymore. It is available to all of us and it's beyond having a spaceship landing on the lawn or in the mountain. We pass that. It's more consciousness reconnecting with consciousness. Oh, what a great answer. That was so unexpected. And I loved every second of that to bring it back to us. Right. We are already that. And, exactly. and it is a very interesting oftentimes difficult, wonderful, wild experience to be a human in this incarnation. Um, I, I, every morning when I do my practice, which includes Mother Earth, I always call to my galactic family and I ask them, you know, guide me on my path, and I also, I have to say this because it's important to me. I always say those who are benevolent and of the light, because I don't want anyone else answering that call to your point. Uh, and I invite them to guide me, to give me their wisdom, to, you know, awaken inside of me who I really am, what I really am, all of it. Uh, I long for it, actually. And they've come to me in my dreams so far, which has been gorgeous wonderful and i long for even more so i am um, i'm on board fully for whatever you know mission i'm here to do and i know you are coming up going to be a conscious life expo big year for you conscious life expo you are on two panels you are speaking you're part of the opening ceremony on friday Folks, the link so you can get tickets is in the show notes. So be sure to join us there February 9th through the 12th at the Los Angeles LAX Hilton Hotel. So what are you going to be speaking about, Vivian? Well, thank you for asking. First, I'm excited to be on a panel called ET Origin, and you are the beautiful hosts. It's going to be amazing to explore aspect of this. I'm also on the panel called the panel of Ascension on Sunday evening, hosted by Deborah Justi, also another powerful lady in the community. 
and the Ascension Tips. I'm going to be speaking my keynote workshop this year. It's about the Arcturian journey to secret sites. I'm going to prepare a very beautiful PowerPoint presentation, pictures of different secret sites that we went to. Well, at the same time, it's going to be a journey with the Arcturian, our interpretation of how these sites represent, how it interconnect to you today, and how it also contribute to the next level of movement changes on the planet. We're going to do some activations. Uh, we always are a blend of sharing, knowledge, experience, and you can also get these activation and keep those seeds of activation in you to supporting you as gifts moving forward. The workshop, uh, it's uh, one of them. And then I have a lecture on, it's called Shifting into a More Fifth Dimensional Universal Time Matrix, which is more based about understanding truly the dynamics behind the cosmic human template changes. Because we need to have that soul body connection and how your human template is really shifting. Again, activations, experiential. You will feel probably the frequencies, the presence of my delegation. And it's always such a joy to be in your presence. So make sure you come and see us. And we have a boot as well on the mezzanine level. So M71, this is the, our boot with my husband, Peter, representing the angelic realm, working with Tensor technology and this wonderful energy tool that are all completely handcrafted and very, very energetic. So come see us. We'll be there the whole weekend. And I, um, I've joked with Vivian before that I'm going to be taking over her international fan club. It's definitely international. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing when I was in Mexico city there to speak and somebody, a couple I've never met before from somewhere else in the United States, another speaker just knew that you were on the roster to speak. You were going to be in the big main room. And he got so excited. He got so excited that I knew you. I couldn't believe beautiful people who really know your work, he and his wife. And it was so gorgeous to sit in that main room. It was a huge room to watch all these people show up to watch you on the screen, to deliver your presentation. And then however many months later, I'm in Italy. Like these have no connection. I'm in Italy in an ashram. I just went there to heal. And there's this amazing 28 year old gal from Amsterdam. And somehow she brings up your name. Oh yeah, do you follow her? I, I listen to all of Vivian Chavez's <laughs> Zooms and information and workshops she does. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you wanna text her? And it's kind of a joy for me to connect people with you because they walk away like, oh. plus of course, because of your demeanor, you're so gracious and so beautiful with people. They're like, it means everything to them. So globally, I know folks are knowing about you. People go to her website. Again, it's infinitehealingfromthestars.com. There's so much there, her radio show, her podcast, her workshops, speaking in many places where you can attend. And I want to ask you, Vivian, what do you next dare to dream? This is Dare to Dream. What are your future goals, visions? Oh, I do have a really big dream slash goal and vision. In fact, on the etheric level, it already exists. Well, I have to be a little bit more patient to get a little bit higher of stabilization on the planet to happen. My ultimate goal and dream will be to teach worldwide in opening my own academy that will bring in the next level of direct teaching, training, but directly with the sacred art of the real aspect of the Arcturians like never before. And there's some aspect of the training I'm getting already right now. And it's gonna be directly linked to our own archives and thousands of years of expertise. But it has to be done and brought in a certain way. That's because this is part of the future timeline. And this is truly what I'm here for. I'm here for that future timeline. So it's, it's almost like, um, you know, like you have this huge, huge conference and you have all these beautiful guests coming in. Everybody serve a purpose. Everybody has gifts. At the same time, there's a crescendo and then the very last one enter the room and they kind of bring everything to the next level. And it's almost like similar this way. They keep showing me the same vision where I see myself 
waiting in a room and it's a huge stadium, like almost like two, the large, almost like two football fields combined together and people from all over the world coming. I see children, family, men, women, in the, depending of no matter where you come from. And I'm sitting in that room and there's about 20 of us in that room. And I'm the only one sitting on my bench by myself. And I have, I'm surrounded by my Octurian at age of state. And I see a door and I go like, can I go now? They're, they're coming. They're here. No, sit. Can I go now? Why are they going? This one is going. Why are they going together? What am I sitting alone? And they go like, breathe. It is imperative that you enter the room at the very last minute. Mm. Uh, you got that key of the future. There's an aspect of future aspect you need to bring. So all in good time. So the reason why I'm sharing that to you is to inspire everyone who's listening that there's no need to run. There's no need to rush. Be in the synchronicity of your soul. Feel it when it's the perfect timing. It's opening doors and it's going to create much more positive ripple effect than if you were rushing into it. That's my point here. Thank you so much for joining me today on the show. It's always a pleasure and an honor to connect with you. The pleasure is all mine to be. I end the show with this quote from Diane Hall. If we are serious about dreaming our awakening into being and creating a peaceful, loving earth in which the heart, spirit, and soul are the only true leaders, we must continue to keep our focus on thoughts of unity and all that truly brings us together. Thanks for joining us today on Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. If you're listening to the podcast and you'd like to see myself and the guest, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger or Spotify, where the videos also are. We are on all major podcast platforms. Next week on the show will be the amazing Neil Donald Walsh, the man who wrote 40 plus books and started with the Conversations with God book series. Boy, will we have a lot to talk about. And so if you like the show, please comment, please like, I read them all. And I'm so grateful for all of you on this ascension and human experience. Thanks for joining us today.